is here we go we are going to work on problems the 2.5 extra practice detailed answers so let's buckle up and get going so it says write the sentence as an inequality and then graph the inequality so we're going to take this a number u is less than seven and greater than three so the first thing that we should pay attention to oh look at that is it an and or an or question? And it tells us straight up, it's an and. So we know it's going to be an intersection. And we know that we can write it as one sentence using less than signs. So let's just do each piece first. Let's take it piece by piece. A number u is less than 7. So what does that look like? Well, that looks like u is less than 7. And u is greater than 3. So u is greater than three. And that's that second part of the problem. Okay, now can we write that? So we can graph it upon that, or, but they want to see for your answer for writing it as an inequality, we would want to write it in numerical order using less than signs. So notice the U is eating the, uh, Inequality is eating the u, and then u is less than 7. So notice my 3 and 7 is in numerical order, and notice that I'm using less than signs. That's the other indicator that it's going to be an n. So 3 is less than u and less than 7. And now if we have to graph that, so I can do it two ways. I can either graph it straight up, knowing that I'm going to get an intersection, open circle, open circle, going in between. Or if I needed to do it piece by piece, I would know it would look like this, where if I had u is um, greater than three and u is less than seven. So if I do the, this in green, let's move this down a little bit. So if I do, let's do zero, three, seven, so u is greater than 3 looks like this, u is less than 7 looks like this, and then the intersection, the true true, where is it true true? There's only one true here, there's only one true here on the border, right next to it we have true true, on this border we only have one true, and then past it we only have one true. So where is it two trues right in between here? So hence why we have this as our solution. So this is the solution. This is what I'm gonna wanna see, okay? So that is the graph of it. That's what it looks like. And we'll do that from this point on. We'll do that intersection. Well, until they give us one that <laughs> doesn't doesn't work that. A number D is less than 2 or greater than or equal to 2. So we have two ors, but this is connected to that or, and this is separating the two inequalities. Okay, so be careful of that. That's the first time we've seen that. Number D is less than negative 2 or D is greater than or equal to 2. So that's how we would write it as an inequality. This would be the first part of our answer. And then if we graph that, I know that if I have ors, I'm going to have uh, ors like in the boat. Who's going to carry the boats? Um, D is less than negative 2 looks like that. D is greater than or equal to 2, negative 2, sorry. D is less than negative 2, or D is greater than or equal to 2. So this is the second part of my solution, okay? And that's good. So we see those wings, or means wings, number of things, or ors. They look like the paddles in a boat. Number three, a number s is no less than negative 2.4 and fewer than 4.2. Uh, 
So S is no less than, so it can be greater than or equal to negative 2.4, and S is fewer than 4.2. Okay, I like that. We'll take that. So if we're going to write that, we know that the negative 2.4 is going to go on the left and the 4.2 is going to go on the right because numerical order, my S, my variable is going to go on the middle. I know I'm going to use less than signs. And so do these create the same? Is this the same as this? Yep, it's eating the S. And is this the same as this? Yes. So I know, I know that I did it correctly. And it takes two seconds just to check your work and make sure that once you write it, so this is the answer. This is what we're going to look for. I do not, I do not want this as an answer. So very important. And then we're going to graph this. So we know it's going to be an intersection, negative 2.4, 0, 4.2. We have a closed circle going to this open circle. And S is greater than negative 2.4. That's a horrible open circle. And S is less than 4.2, so that would be the intersection. Number four. Number C is more than four or at most negative six and one half. C is more than negative four or C is at most negative six and one half. So that looks like that. That is my first answer. And now I'm going to graph it. Negative six and a half. When we write our numbers, make sure that they are in numerical order. So we, again, this was a little bit tricky that they tried to trick you there. So C is greater than negative four. Open circle going to the right. C is less than or equal to six and a half. Closed circle going to the left. And that looks good. Number five now says solve the inequality and graph the solution. Okay, so I'm going to move this to the middle because we're going to write two statements. We're going to write four is less than x minus three. And since it's one statement, we know that it's an and statement. Notice it's in numerical order, four and seven, and notice that we use less than signs. So those are indicators also that it's an and statement. So now we're going to isolate the variable. And x is less than or equal to 10. Good. OK, so now let's write it as a statement. 7, 10, x. So that would be the first statement. That's the solution as a, an inequality. And now let's graph it. So 0, 7, 10, open circle, closed circle. So this is the second part of my solution. I want to see both of those pieces. So if we look, solve the inequality, graph the solution. Oh, OK. So you wouldn't have to necessarily. Not necessary. Not needed. But good. That's good stuff. Good practice. So this is the solution. That's the solution that we're looking for. All right, number six. So we again, oh, notice, anybody notice this? Looks, look at this one. What do you notice? Two things. One, not less than signs. You should notice it's written as one statement. Notice those aren't less than signs. And they're not less than signs because this is not in numerical order. So if we rewrite this, does it become less than signs? Yes, it does. And we wrote it in numerical order. So I, you don't have to, 
but this just validates that this is written correctly. So that's the only thing this provides is that, okay, I know it's an end statement. I'm going to write my two equations and negative 5g is less than or equal to 15. So there's a couple things. Everybody see the place that they're going to try to trick you? Negative 5. We're going to divide both sides by a negative, so we have to flip the inequality sign. We're going to divide both sides by a negative, and we're going to have to flip the inequality sign. And this is an AND. So let's write it in numerical order. Let's put our variable in the middle, and let's make sure. Is that correct? Yep. And is this correct? Yep, it's eating the 2, and it's eating the g with the other one. Good. So how do we graph that? Negative 3, 0, 2, closed circle, closed circle. Good. Okay. That's nice. In, okay, so now we have an or. So we can just take each of these statements separately. We don't have to think too much. We're just rewriting it and solving it. So we'll subtract 4. We get z is less than negative 2 and divide by negative 3 and we get z is greater than 7, hello, 9. And we can't rewrite it as 1, so we don't need to. We know it's an or, so we're expecting to get ors in the boat. Open circle going less than and greater than going to the right. Open circle going to the right. So that should be our solution. Um, and it is. Good. Number 8 also, again an or. So 2t plus 6 is less than 10. Or negative t plus 7 is less than or equal to 2. So we're going to subtract 6. 2t is less than 4. Divide by 2. t is less than 2. Or we're going to subtract 7. Negative t is less than or equal to negative 5. Let's divide by negative 1. And we get t is greater than or equal to 5. That would be our inequalities solutions. Let's graph them. 0, 2, 5. t is less than 2. Open circle going to left. t is greater than or equal to 5. Closed circle going to the right. So that looks pretty good. Number 9. Ooh, a little bit more complex. Hello. 8 is less than or equal to 1 third times 6x plus 24. And 1 third 6x plus 24 is less than or equal to 12. It's a horrible 24. And guess who just entered the room? Chewbacca. Yep. So there's two ways we could do this. Uh, here's the big, right? We could distribute, but that kind of makes a little bit of work here. Uh, we can just multiply by the reciprocal of one third. Because it's multiplying Chewbacca, I can just multiply both sides by three, and that gets rid of that one third. We get negative 24. I don't have to flip because I multiply both sides by a positive 3. And then that gets rid of Chewbacca, and we have 6x plus 24. And then we could subtract 24. We get negative 48, then 6x. We can divide by 6, and we get negative 8 is x. That would be really impressive. And we have to remember this is an and. So we have an intersection. We're going to have a segment. We're expecting a segment. So same thing. I can multiply by 3, multiply by 3, 
That gets rid of this numerator denominator. You're left with 6x plus 24 is less than or equal to 12 times 3 is 36 minus 24. 6x is less than or equal to 12. Divide by 6, x is less than 2. So if I wanted to write this as a single statement, does that work? Is that still correct? Yeah, it is. And then we can graph it. Negative 8, 0, 2. So uh, closed circle, closed circle. This is where they're both true. It's the true true. Oh, whoa, hello. Okay, two. Oh, I like this. Anyway, because we're going to see, can we still use that technique? Or, oh, it's an or. 0 0.215k plus 10. So, it's a horrible zero. It's a horrible zero. Okay, so how do we get rid of, can we distribute? Yep. Some students are going to distribute, or some students are going to divide both sides by 2. That's cool. 7 minus 4k is greater than 6. Let's subtract the 7. We're going to move the constants because our variables are already consolidated. And we get negative 1. Divide by negative 4 and we get k is greater than 1 fourth. Is that an end or an or? I'm pretty sure it's an or. Let's look at this one. All right, so I can either distribute, which is fine, or I can divide by 0 0.2. Now I divide by 0 0.2 because that goes into five. Pretty sure that's 25. So we get 25 is less than 15k plus 10. So we subtract 10. We get 15 is less than 15k. Divide by 15, divide by 15. 1 is less than k. That's my other one. I don't have to write it as 1 because it's an or. But let's look at the solutions. 0, 1 fourth, 1. So we have an open circle. Oh. oh, I forgot. Okay. You probably already saw it. So look, I was going to get this, which can actually end up being a solution at some point down the road. But that's a bizarre one. That's a, like a 1% type of problem. So I went back to my work and I noticed I divided both sides by negative and Mr. Mac forgot to flip the inequality sign. So this is actually going in this direction, and this is open circle going to the right at 1. So, caught my mistake. And that's really important, is can you find your mistakes when you make them? Are you rushing along? Are you just completing work just to complete it? Or are you cognizant of what you're doing and what mistakes you might have made? So, good catch, Mr. Mac. Well, thank you. A safety regulation states that the height of a handrail should be no more than 37 inches and no less than 30 inches. So no more than 37. So the handrail, so let's do H, can be no more than 37. So it has to be less than or equal to 37. And, oh, look at that. It even told us that we are an and. And the handrail can be no less, so it needs to be greater than or equal to 30 inches. Write an inequality that represents the acceptable heights. So we know that it's an and, so we're going to write it. And we also know that our numbers need to be in numerical order. So we would say 30 is less than or equal to h, which is less than or equal to 37. Oh yeah, that's a good one. A certain machine operates properly when the relative humidity, H, satisfies the inequality. Negative 60 is less than or equal to 2 times the quantity H minus 50. 
and less than or equal to 60. Solve for h and find the range of values for which the machine operates properly. So we have this equation or this inequality, excuse me, and I'm going to write the two inequalities. And because it's less than numerical order, 2 times h minus 50 is less than or equal to 60. So I'm going to divide by 2. I get negative 30 is less than or equal to h minus 50. We'll add 50. 20 is less than or equal to h, and we'll divide by 2. h minus 50 is less than or equal to 30. Let's add 50. h is less than or equal to 80. So if I wanted to write that as one statement, it would look like that. And if we have to graph it, I forgot if it said graph or just write, it's a closed circle. So those values are between, the height can be between and including 20 to 80. Okay, so uh, I think they ask for an inequality, right? An inequality. Yeah, yeah, solve. So that's it. We wouldn't need to graph that one. In exercises 13 to 16, solve the inequality, graph the solution. Okay, we're here. We're on a roll. We like it. So 38 is less than 9 minus 2c and 9 minus 2c is less than 4. We're going to move the constants. That's 29 is less than negative 2c. Yowzers. So we got an odd fraction or a weird fraction. Negative 29 seconds is greater than c. That's one part. And we don't have to change that. We can leave it as negative 29 over 2. We're going to subtract 9. Negative 2c is less than negative 5. We got another weird fraction. c is greater than 5 halves. So if we had to write that as an inequality, negative 29 halves is less than c. Ooh. Ooh. That feels weird. It's eating. Oh, okay. So that's a weird one. Let's make sure that we wrote it. Mr. Mac. Oh. Notice it was not in it was not in numerical order. Let's keep going. So we get that. Ooh, no, we can't do that. So let's look at these two solutions. This is going to be a weird one. I even knew it was going to be weird, just with these weird answers. So if we graph it, let's graph it. Remember, it's an and, so both have to be true. So C is less than 29 halves. So that's open circle going to the left. And C is greater than five halves. Since it's an and, we need true, true, or where it overlaps. Does it overlap anywhere? Nope. So the answer for this one is no solution. Now, just because it wasn't in numerical order didn't make it wrong, because we saw that we could rewrite it. I forget which one that we rewrite. There was one of those problems where we we rewrote this and we got a solution that worked. So it's not that if it's not in, but notice when we rewrite it, we have less than signs. So that's going to work within our constraints. If we had rewritten that, we would have had four is, uh, it's eating the four, is, is greater than nine minus two C, which is greater than 38 and 
that should tell you, wow, that's weird. That's going to be an interesting thing. I need to pay attention to my solution. So it doesn't negate, but once we come down and solve it, remember it's still an and, um, but it gave us no solution. So 14. Graph the solution if possible. Ha, huh, see, if possible. So they already told us that there was going to be some shenanigans in these problems. So let's see this one. Let's see if this creates a weird solution. This is an or. So let's move the constants because our variables are already consolidated. We get 13.8 is greater than negative 0.6x. Let's divide by negative 0.6. 0 0.6. 0 .6. Uh, that's going to give us negative. Um, well, let's see what we get. 13.8 divided by 0.6. I don't have to include I don't have to include the negative because the negative is just telling me the direction. So I know that those numbers are going to produce 23 and the negative is not going to change when we divide. We do have to flip the inequality sign so we get x is greater than negative 23 or negative 23 is less than x. Or, and we're going to minus 9, we get 3x is less than or equal to 9 divided by 3 and we get x is less than 3. So this is an or. So we see what's going to happen here. Hopefully you see negative 23, 0, 3. So we have x is greater than 23. x is less than or equal to 3. So since it's an or, we need at least one true. So we have one true here, we have one true here, we have two trues throughout here, and even at this border there's true, two trues, and then we have one true throughout here. So show me where there's at least one true. Everywhere. So the answer is all real numbers. And the way we graph that zero with a line over it. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, you got to graph it. So you have to write all real numbers and you have to graph that portion. Number 15, let's subtract seven. We get y. Ooh, here's, a, here's a situation where we're given an and and it wasn't written as a single. Uh, let's subtract two. Negative y is greater than 7. Let's divide by negative 1. y is less than negative 7. So this is another good... Ooh, okay. Ooh, this is a good one. Let's make sure I did it right. So we subtract a 7. We get y is less than. We subtract the 2. And then we flip the inequality. So this is cool. So this is an end. So... If we have to graph these, so we have, uh, sorry, let's do negative 7, 0, getting tired, sorry, 1. So if we graph this part of it, y is less than or equal to 1. That looks like this. Remember, this is an and statement. If we're going to graph this, that looks like open circle going to the left also. So and is where it's true, true. So where is it true, true? It's false, false right here, right? False, false. It is uh, true, false. It's true for blue, false for green. It is true, false. True for blue, false for green. It is still true, false right on this border. And then once we go over that border, we get true, true, true for green, true for blue, and all the way through there. So we want to know where is it true, true. So that true, true 
is going to look like this. So if we had to graph the solutions, it's going to be this. This is where it's true, true. Okay, very, very tricky. Uh, and if we had to write a solution for it, we would write y to represent this, we would write y is less than negative 7. That's what the inequality. It would not be written as a compound for the solutions because it's just pretty straightforward. It's just values that are less than negative 7. That's a real good one. Okay, we're still working on it. Whoa! Look at this. Okay, let's move the variables first. I'm going to move, since we have variables on both sides, I'm going to move the variables. You get 3 is greater than or equal to 12, and that should be uh, 5 over 5, which is just x. Let's subtract 12, and we get negative 9 is greater than or equal to x. We don't have to flip it because we didn't multiply or divide. This is an and. So let's move, uh, let's move the variables to this side. That is 7 is less than x plus 9. Let's subtract 9. We get negative 2 is less than x. So let's see, it's and, so it has to be true, true. So we have negative 9, negative 2, and 0. So that looks like a 4, Mr. Mac. 9. So let's do this in green. So x is less than or equal to negative 9. That goes that way. Let's do x is greater than negative 2. That goes that way. So since it's an and, there is no intersecting points. There are no true, true. So this is no solution for number 16. What number is this? 16. Yep. All right. Uh, number 17. What's interesting about um, number 17 is this notation. You have set notation. That means for the set of numbers that you're going to plug in for x into this inequality, our values for x are going to work within these constraints. So I cannot, I'm going to plug in values that are greater than negative 2.8, yet less than or equal to 2. So those are the numbers that I can plug in into this inequality. Okay, so determine the value of k, which the inequality, blah, blah, has the solution set of negative 2.8. <laughs> okay, all right, so... Um, Hmm. Hmm. All right. Um, well, that's what we have to end up with. So if we have 5 minus k is less than or equal to negative x plus k, and let's move this over. Let's move all of it over. And... negative x plus k is less than 6.3. .3. So what value is going to produce these endpoints, right? Once we solve, what value can we put in for k that would produce 2 or negative 2 or whatever? So let's do this. Hmm. I think this is the easier one to deal with. So if, uh, if I plug in, right, if I sub, well, let's, let's move the x over because I don't want to fiddle with multiplying and dividing, etc. So that gives me k is less than x plus 6.3. And now let's move the 6.3 over. And so, we can have k minus 6.3 is less than x. So what value, so what part of this 
are we dealing with? Well, we're actually dealing with this portion because it says x is greater than. So this is the side that says x is greater than. So how can I get a negative 2.8? What value for k would give me negative 2.8? And also because this is the, uh, it doesn't have the equal sign, so that's the other thing that I knew. So what value for k would give me a negative 2.8? So, um, so technically, we're going to do this. K minus 6.3 equals negative 2.8, negative 2.8. If I add 6.3, add 6.3, I get K equals. I know I have an equation. I'm just looking for that. It doesn't negate what I'm doing there. So uh, I would not subtract 6.3 from 2.8 because 6.3 is bigger. So I take 6.3 minus 2.8, borrow, uh, what's that, uh, 5.3.5, positive 3.5. So K would need to equal 3.5. So if I plug in 3.5 for K, do I get positive 2 on this other one? So what I say, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5. Negative x plus 3.5. So that gives me uh, 5 minus 3.5 gives me 1.5. Yep, it's less than negative x plus 3.5. I'm going to subtract 3.5. Subtract 3.5 gives me negative 2 is less than or equal to negative x. I'm going to divide by negative 1 and I get two is greater than or equal to X. Is that my upper extreme? X is, oh yes, it is. So K must equal 3.5. K must equal 3.5. Hey now, get your game out. Yep, and it has to be equal. That is the value that you plug in for K that makes this inequality. Whew. That was kind of crazy. I don't know if you stayed with me on that one. That one was pretty technical. All right. Good luck.